The Metagrow Smart 8 is a great light at a phenomenal price. It's a large foldable grow light with 8 LED bars and 760 watts of power. I got one in February, tested it, and started using it in my tent. But it's popular. They sold out before I could release my video. The Smart 8 is designed for home growers with an onboard display, timer, dimmer, and bloom switch. It's now back in stock, but don't sit on it. The Smart 8 is one of the best deals in horticultural lighting. And we have a 10% discount code, CCFC. Hello, growers. I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I conduct independent grow light tests as part of our comprehensive grow light guide. In this video, I run the Metagrow Smart 8 through nine different PAR and EPAR tests in 4x4 and 5x5 spaces, with and without the bloom button. I'll review all the maps and crunch all the numbers. And I'll tell you what the bloom button does and when to use it. As always, during my live premiere on YouTube, I'll give away the light that I tested to one lucky viewer. And after the premiere, I'm doing a live interview after show about the Smart 8 on the Green Goblin 510 YouTube channel. Watch it live or anytime after. The Metacro Smart 8 arrived in a large box. Let's look inside. There's the fixture folded and wrapped up. And this box, which has all the accessories. Power cord, the user manual here, the unique hanging kit comes in two little bags, and then a plug adapter and an RJ cable to daisy chain. Let's check out the fixture. It has a nice white finish. The Smart 8 is designed for home growers. It has a cool digital display, and it's just a nice looking fixture. I'll open it up. There's no assembly required. Let's take a closer look. I laid everything out. The white paint gives it a distinctive style. Otherwise, it's a fairly simple design with four bars on each side of a central chassis that houses the drivers. Along the bars, you can see the three rows of full-spectrum Sanan diodes, interspersed with Osram 660 nanometer diodes. There are a total of 2,960 diodes. That's 3.9 diodes per watt, or about 0.26 watts per diode. They provide an interesting set of hanging cables, and I use four ratchet pulleys for my PAR tests. I'll raise the Metagrow Smart Aid into position. I just need to plug in the power cord. It plugs into the center chassis here. I'll tighten the connection. Now I just have to move the dimmer knob to the 100% position, and we have light. You can see the digital display here. It shows the power setting and calculates the total PPF. To get the full power, I'll turn on the bloom button here in the middle. You can see the power draw and PPF go up, and the display now shows the F1 spectrum. The dimmer knob has an option for external control, or preset options at 100, 80, 60, or 40%. This other knob controls a built-in timer. You can leave the timer off, but if you use it, it activates a sunrise and sunset sequence. Just select one of the preset options. I put it on 12 hours, which is meant for flowering. You can see the countdown timer. But there is an issue with the timer that I'll tell you about as we look at the diodes. The diodes look cool with the red Osram diodes punctuating the soft white light from the 4000K San An diodes. The two types of diodes have separate drivers, and that's how the bloom button works. When the bloom button is on, the 660 nanometer diodes are on 100%. When the bloom button is off, the 660 nanometer diodes are dimmed to about 60%. I'll test it both ways. The timer is cool because it activates the sunrise and sunset sequence, but there is an issue. The timer has no memory, and it will reset and restart if it loses power. This could create a big problem if power was lost and then restored during the dark period. It's a potentially serious issue, but there's an easy fix. When you use the onboard timer, you should also use a plug-in timer, like you would with any other light. When the plug-in timer sends power to the fixture, it will start the onboard timer and activate the sunrise mode. This will keep the system on time and prevent the lights from coming on when they shouldn't, if you have a power outage. While we wait for the diodes to fully warm up, let's check out the published stats. This is the product page for the Smart 8 on Metagrow.com. Metagrow is looking to take a share of the grow light market, and they're putting out high quality fixtures at prices nobody else can match. The list price for the Smart 8 is only $629, and we have a 10% discount code. Use code CCFC on Metagrow.com. Your price for the Smart 8 will be only about $566, and that includes free shipping. Let's look at the specifications. As I mentioned, it's a 760-watt light. 
and they show a calculated efficiency of 2.8 micromoles per watt for a calculated PPF of 2,136 micromoles. Before I run the tests, let's run these numbers through the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. It focuses on the important metrics and allows you to make better comparisons. In the calculator on the right, I load all the fixtures that I test. The Smart 8 is the third fixture that I've tested for Metagrow. I'll pull up the data from my test with the Metagrow Fold 8. It has great performance statistics. With discount code CCFC on Metagrow.com, the current price for the Fold 8 is $530. That gives it a cost efficiency of only 33 cents per micromole, which is among the lowest prices on the market. In the calculator on the left, I'll enter the data we got for the Smart 8. It's a 760 watt light. With discount code CCFC, the cost is only $566. The PPF is calculated. They list 2.8 micromoles per watt, or 2,136 micromoles. The calculator estimates that 1,560 micromoles will reach the canopy. That would be a usable photon efficiency of only 2.05. I think the Smart 8, like the Fold 8, will do better than that. But even that PPF would make the Smart 8 an amazing deal. Let's go see how it performs in the tests. I set the Metagross Smart Aid up in the 5x5 test area. At 100% power, with the bloom button on, it hit a maximum PPFD of 1,000 micromoles per square meter at a height of 58 centimeters, 23 inches above the sensor. I ran a PAR test with the Apogee SQ500 PAR sensor and an EPAR test with the Apogee SQ610 extended PAR sensor. Then I turned the bloom button off and I ran both tests again. Let's see how the Smart 8 performed in a 5x5 space. First, we have the PAR map with the bloom button on. This is the test that set the hanging height with a maximum PPFD of 1,000 micromoles per square meter. There's plenty of light, and it's well distributed across the map. The lowest PPFD in the corner is 508 micromoles per square meter. That's excellent for a 5x5 PAR test. Switching to the EPAR map, the values across the map go up by about 30 points, but the distribution remains the same. EPAR measures PAR light plus far red. The Smart 8 does not have any diodes dedicated to far red light, but the full spectrum diodes put out a small portion of their energy in the far red wavelengths. Let's run the numbers on these tests with the bloom button on. The hanging height for both tests was 58 centimeters, 23 inches above the sensors. The maximum PPFD was right at 1,000 micromoles per square meter, and the maximum EPPFD was slightly higher at 1,027 micromoles per square meter. In the PAR test, the average PPFD was 747.9 micromoles per square meter, which converts to a usable PPF of 1,682.8 micromoles. In the EPAR test, the average EPPFD was 775.3 micromoles per square meter, which converts to a usable EPPF of 1,744.4 micromoles. The power draw during both tests was 750 watts. So the usable PAR photon efficiency is 2.24 micromoles per watt, and the usable EPAR photon efficiency is 2.33 micromoles per watt. These are excellent statistics that rival the top end fixtures on the market. Let's see what happens when we turn the bloom button off. I kept the fixture in the same position so we can see the impact of the bloom button. The density values in both the PAR and EPAR maps go down. There are lower maximum and average densities, and less usable light than we had with the bloom button on. But there's also less power consumption. The power draw went down by 9%, but the PAR and EPAR values only went down by about 7%. So the Smart 8 is slightly more efficient with the bloom button off. It had a usable photon efficiency of 2.27 micromoles per watt in the PAR range, and 2.37 micromoles per watt in the EPAR range. Interestingly, the amount of far red light did not go down compared to the first set of tests. The far red light that I'm measuring comes from the full spectrum diodes, which are not affected by the bloom button. Only the 660 nanometer deep red light is dimmed. Turning the bloom button on increases the 660 nanometer light, and it also increases the overall flux. I think the increase in flux is more important than the change in spectrum. Whether it's on or off during veg is more a question of power and efficiency but I would be sure to have it on when the plants are in flower. In a 4x4 space, at full power, with the bloom switch on, the Smart 8 produces too much light for plants. 
unless you run supplemental carbon dioxide. I lowered the Smart 8 to 12 inches, 30.5 centimeters above the sensors. The maximum PPFD at that height was 1,481 micromoles per square meter. That's safe for grows with at least 1,200 ppm of carbon dioxide. I ran both PAR and EPAR tests. Let's check out the maps. First, we have the PAR map with the 400 to 700 nanometer light. The distribution from top to bottom is excellent. The bars are close to the edges, and some of the highest density values are right at the top and bottom of the map. The sides, which were along the ends of the LED bars, have slightly less density at this height. But the lowest PPFD is still great at 820 micromoles per square meter. In the EPAR map, the values go up by almost 60 points. You can see there's a little less density right in the center. That's because of a larger gap there, where the chassis is between the bars. The distribution of photon density is excellent in these maps. Let's run the numbers. The hanging height for these tests was 12 inches, 30.5 centimeters above the sensors. The maximum PPFD was 1,481 micromoles per square meter, and the maximum ePPFD was 1,540. The average PPFD was an impressive 1,209.6 micromoles per square meter, which converts to a usable PPF of 1,741.9 micromoles. In the EPAR range, the average was up at 1,267.3 micromoles per square meter, which is good for a usable ePPF of 1,824.9 micromoles. The power draw during both tests was 750 watts. So the usable PAR photon efficiency is 2.32 micromoles per watt, and the usable EPAR photon efficiency is 2.43 micromoles per watt. The efficiency is higher in these tests than the 5x5 tests because the fixture is much closer to the canopy. However, no matter how high I got it, the PPFD would be too much for growers without supplemental carbon dioxide. I dimmed the Smart 8 to 80% at this height, but the ePPFD was still close to 1,300 micromoles per square meter. So I dimmed it to 60% and found a surprisingly good result. I ran this EPAR test with the dimmer set to 60% and the bloom button on. I kept the same 12 inch hanging height and found the maximum ePPFD toward the bottom of the map at 989 micromoles per square meter. This is perfect for growers without supplemental carbon dioxide. The average ePPFD is up at 815.6 micromoles per square meter, and the lowest ePPFD is 566 micromoles per square meter. So even at 60% power, there is plenty of light all across the map. I measured a usable PPF of 1,174.5 micromoles, and at 60%, the power draw was only 458 watts. So the photon efficiency in this test is off the charts at 2.56 micromoles per watt. This test is why I decided to run the Smart 8 in my personal grow. It gives an excellent spread of perfect density light only 12 inches above the canopy, with a photon efficiency of 2.56 micromoles per watt. I chose it for my grow, and I wasn't even considering the price. I put the Smart 8 back up to 80% power and raised it up to see if I could get the maximum PPFD down to the 1,000 micromole per square meter limit. It is possible, but I had to raise it all the way up to 66 centimeters, about 26 inches above the sensors. If you have plenty of vertical space, this could be an incredible option. I ran both PAR and EPAR tests at this height. Let's check out the maps and data. The PAR map is on the left and the EPAR map is on the right. They are both incredible density maps but the 66 centimeter hanging height is something you need to consider. In the PAR map, the maximum PPFD is 1,000 micromoles per square meter, which is safe for growers without supplemental carbon dioxide. The distribution is incredibly even. The lowest PPFD is up at 833 micromoles per square meter. So the lowest value is more than 83% of the maximum value, which is phenomenal. The average PPFD is 919.7 micromoles per square meter. The usable PPF in this test was 1,324.4 micromoles, and the power draw was only 635 watts. So the photon efficiency in this PAR test was 2.09 micromoles per watt. In the EPAR test, all the values are about 3.5% higher. The maximum PPFD 
was 1,033 micromoles per square meter. The average PPFD was 954.9 micromoles per square meter. The usable PPF was 1,375.1 micromoles. The power draw stayed the same, so the photon efficiency in the EPAR test is 2.17 micromoles per watt. The efficiency in these tests is lower than the other tests, primarily because the Smart 8 is hung so high in these tests. But again, if you have the vertical clearance, these maps may be worth the 635 watts of power. And if you run out of space, you can always dim it to 60% and get a great distribution of light at only 12 inches. I publish all of the maps and data in the test report in the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. Here are the main data for the Metagross Smart 8 in the 5x5EPAR test. For grows without supplemental carbon dioxide, we rate it to cover up to 26.8 square feet and estimate the harvest potential at 46.7 ounces. That's almost 3 pounds. Here, you can find our discount codes and shopping links. Shop Metagrow.com and use discount code CCFC. The Smart 8 comes to only $566, which gives it a cost efficiency of only 32 cents per micromole. That's less than half of some competitive fixtures. The price for the performance is incredible. The Smart 8 is the third fixture I've tested from Metagrow. They all performed well and set records for cost efficiency. The Fold 8, the Easy 8, and now the Smart 8. So the winning number in the PAR Test Premier giveaway is 888. Congrats to whoever guessed the closest number. And if you missed the Premier, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. Below the test data and the Grow Space Calculator, you'll find my written review. The Metagrow Smart 8 is a great grow light. The price is incredible, but it's not just about the price. I chose it for my grow because of its performance. You saw the PAR and EPAR maps. It has excellent distribution and photon efficiency. The Smart 8 deserves to be a popular fixture. It's well made and packs a lot of power. And it really is an incredible deal. Even if you run it dim, it creates a much better 4x4 map than any fixture meant for a 4x4. And it costs less than most of them. In a 5x5 space, Metacro fixtures are easily the best deal. That's been true for over a year now. As a company, Metagrow is trying to capture market share, so they're putting out quality fixtures at prices that nobody else can match. When I first tested the Fold 8, I was skeptical, but now I know dozens of growers running Metagrow lights, and I just ran the Smart 8 myself. The feedback and results have been excellent. I'm going to sit down for a live interview with fellow Gromy Green Goblin 510. We've both run the Smart 8, and we'll talk about our experiences and answer viewer questions. We're doing it live right after this video premieres. Join us live or watch it later. It's on the Green Goblin 510 YouTube channel. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the growers' interests first. Our goal is to provide impartial, science-based testing and reviews for home growers. You support our work when you use our codes to purchase grow lights. I'd like to thank Kevin at Medigrow for sending me the Smart 8 to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss the next PAR Test Premier giveaway. Learn about all our Grow Light giveaways on the Deals and Discounts page at CocoaForCannabis.com. While you're there, you can read our articles, chat with our community in the chat room, join our next Grow Challenge, and try your hand at the Grow Light Calculator. Grow your own, but don't grow alone. Let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.